Good evening and welcome to GU This Week. I'm Maggie Fisher. And I'm Reed Vido. Tonight, we'll check out what ha what's happening in GU news, sports, and weather. In the light of Valentine's Day this weekend, we'll take a look at some zags to reflect the Jesuit spirit of love and service within the community. Social media plays a vital role in the Gonzaga community every day, keeping students, family, and alumni connected. But like any college campus, Gonzaga is not exempt from the negativity that arises when social media is abused. Last Tuesday, DU community members gathered to talk about the presence of the hate speech on our campus and how we can change it. Kellen Faker Boyle has the story. Whether it's face-to-face -face, on Yik Yak, Twitter, or other social media, it's not that hard to find instances of hate speech from the normally accepting Gonzaga community. Last Tuesday, students and faculty alike gathered to discuss this issue at the Jepson Center in the Wolf Auditorium. The panel discussion was called We Can Do Better, a conversation on hate speech and harassment, and was sponsored by eight different Gonzaga groups that fight for social advancement and dialogue. Three faculty panelists helped facilitate the discussion, providing small presentations of what hate speech is and how and why it affects the entire community. One of the panelists, David Garcia, explained many Zags don't easily recognize the issue of hate speech because they themselves are not subjected to it. If it's not being directed towards you, um, oftentimes we're unaware that it's happening. We're not aware and so it's then it becomes a question of why should I care? Why should I engage in these types of conversations? Panelists also said one of the reasons people ignore the issue of hate speech is the idea of intent versus impact. Saying things like that's so gay may have no intentions of hurting the gay community but the impact goes far deeper as the word gay becomes synonymous with bad. Senior Shannon Clark, president of Hero, helped organize the event. One of the reasons she felt inclined to hold the discussion came from last April, when her fiancé fell victim to homophobic hate speech. Shannon and the rest of the panelists agreed that it's important for students to stop being bystanders in these situations and instead engage in the conversation and interject when hate speech arises. I think, again, calling back to mission and making sure that we are, we're making it clear where GU stands, and I think that's something that GU has to work on. We have to, we have to draw a line in the sand. These are the things that are acceptable for Zags, and these are things that are not acceptable. But outside of that, we need to build each other up. We need to support each other outside of campus. The conversation is far from over, and you can participate in the the next panel called GU and Title IX Policies on March 3rd at 7.45 p.m. in the Wolf Auditorium. This is Kellen Faker Boyle, GU TV. Let's hope we get a big turnout at that panel to show that Zags are above this sort of thing. Calling all Zags, get ready to move. Registration for GU's first ever dance marathon is now open. The money raised by the marathon will support Sacred Heart Children's Hospital and the miracle children who receive treatment there. Meet Lizzie. She's a five-year-old oncology patient at Sacred Heart with a love for coloring, plain dress-up, and Disney's Frozen. Lizzie is one of the many Sacred Heart kids who receive support thanks to the funds raised by Gonzaga students. Dance Marathon is a part of Children's Miracle Network, which unites 250 schools nationwide under one goal. The kind of slogan is to do it for the kids, so by participating in Dance Marathon, we're dancing for the kids that can't. GU sophomore Shelby Wells is the external relations chair for Gonzaga's Dance Marathon. She and the planning team have been working since August to get campus ready for the first, kind, first fundraiser of this kind. There's going to be lots of dancing. You're going to be able to meet some of the kids and hear some stories from the families um, and really just like celebrate. I think this, what we're doing is something that deserves celebration. Um, so you're going to have a lot of energy, a lot of positivity and um, I think a lot of awesome stories and miracles. Stories like Lizzie's whose personality shines through her sickness. Students looking to participate in the Dance Marathon can learn more on the event Facebook page, facebook.com slash GU Dance Marathon. Cute story about Sacred Heart, Reed. All the students there, or the children rather, get to make their own flags and they fly whenever they're in the hospital. That is actually a really cute story and it warms my heart to hear that, you know, the students are those kids in there are keeping such high spirits about that. <clears throat> Here at GU, we really love our Zags from the kennel to the bark. Gonzaga is well known for its tight-knit community. Now let's check in with our social media producer, Tiffany Lee, who has the inside scoop. How's it going in there, Tiff? Hey guys, welcome to the Tweet Suite. So this week, we asked you guys to send us pictures of the people you love using the hashtag LoveMyZags. And here are a few of your tweets. So Aubrey Brown sent us, I love these guys. Can't wait to see them in Vegas. Woot woot next month. 
Hashtag go Zags, hashtag 303. And we got some love from Nate Pacheco on the Gonzaga men's soccer team. Go Zags. And we also got some love from Olivia Schul from the bio department with Maddie the Bulldog and Gus who's on display. And coming up next, we have Reed Vido with the weather and we have Adam Arak with the sports. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Let's drop! Okay, class, you have 60 minutes, and it's 240 points. Welcome back to GUTV, I'm Adam Rack. Coming into this season, the Gonzaga women's basketball team was flying under the radar. After losing all-time winningest coach Kelly Graves to Oregon, there were questions of whether the team could continue the streak of 10 straight conference championships. But current coach Lisa Fortier has not missed a beat. Zags came into Saturday on an 11-game winning streak, and they would be in for a game for the ages. So straight to the second half, Andrea Gordon, she misses the three, but Michaela Rakova, she gets the putback that extends the lead to three, the Don's lead to three. After the Zags hit a jumper, Shaniqua Nellis, she passes it to Georgia Sturton, and she nails the corner three. 58-56, just two minutes left. Next possession, Gordon loses the ball, but somehow she finds Rakova again. Don's take the one-point lead. Next GU possession, Nellis. She gets it from Kiani Albanez. And the senior, she's been making big plays all game. She hits the three. They go up 61-59. She's pumped. So the Zags hit a free throw, so now there's eight seconds left. The Dons get down to the court. Freshman Anna Sulin gets it, and she hits the three. Her first shot of the, first shot of the game. Zags can't get a shot, so we go to overtime tied at 62. And the Dons were pumped about that. So in the overtime, GU up two. Uh, Paige Spites gets a tip in. That'd be the only basket, so we'd go to a second overtime, tied at 66. And now GU up two again, it's Sulin. Her second, just her second shot of the game, give the Don the lead. They'd hit a free throw, so now, Lindsay Sherbert, Gonzaga down 78 to 66. She ties it up, so we go to a third overtime. So two minutes left, Georgia Sturton, she finds Sunny Greinecker on the baseline. She hits it, GU with the 60 to 65 leads. They'd add, they'd add a couple free throws after that. But it's Gordon. They couldn't do it again, could they? Oh, she ties it up. We go. That sends us to a fourth overtime. So in that frame, Gordon one more time. Ooh, that gives them an 80, uh, 84 to 80 lead. And then, right then, it became Emma Stash time. The freshman finds Sunny Grindiker in the lane for the layup. That ties it at 84. Next U possession, ja Stash. She pulls up and gets the home court bounce for the three. 85, 82 G. And one more time. Stash comes off the screen from Greinecker and just nails the jumper. She had seven points in the fourth overtime. And G would get the win. 
uh, Zags would pull away to get the 91-84 win in quadruple overtime. Now this game set numerous GU and conference records. The game lasted nearly two and a half hours with three players over 50 minutes for the game. There was 21 lead chases, six of them in overtime. It was the longest game ever in conference play for the West Coast Conference. And it's the first overtime game for a GU team since 1978 when the men took down Idaho State 81-78. And it is the longest game ever in McCarthy Athletic Center history. Even with the long game on Saturday, it was hard to find an empty seat in McCarthy. It has been that way ever since it opened 10 years ago. The McCarthy Athletic Center is nearly impossible for a road team to get a win. The men and women's team have combined for a total of 31 losses in over 300 games played. On the men's side, it owns the nation's longest winning streak at 38. But having a dominant home court doesn't just depend on the team, it's about those who fill the stands. We have one of the best crowds in the country. Uh, we played against some, some pretty tough crowds this past weekend, and I think uh, it's going to be good for our team to, to get back in front of our fans. The women's basketball team currently dominates the West Coast Conference for attendance. Their average of 5,233 fans is 1,000 more than the other nine WCC schools combined. Whether it's the stomps of Zombie Nation or the blaring of ACDC through the speakers, the atmosphere makes a mark on everybody. I have four more games here, and it's crazy to think that coming from you know, coming in 2011 to now 2015, it's ridiculous. With just six games left in the season, McCarthy and its fans only have a few more chances to show why it's one of the best basketball venues in the nation. For GU TV, I'm Adam Arak. The men are next up in McCarthy when they take on LMU tomorrow. Just a few hundred feet away, intramural playoffs are right around the corner. And we see some familiar GU TV faces as the shooters take on threes, please, in a co-ed rec game. And it's the last game before playoffs and ball a little bit of a scramble, but Danny Chastain, he throws a no-look pass to Steven Carr. Shooters go up 10-3, but threes, please, would come storming back. Abigail Burke, she gets the ball on the baseline, and she cuts the lead to just two. So next possession for threes, please, David Hensel. Gets it and drives, and he'll, he'll twist and turn, and he'll hit the layup. That ties it at 14. But Clint Mason, he'll get the, he gets the ball, makes an errant pass, but to, somehow Thomas Ackles gets up with it, and he'll just pull up. Oh, and he just nails that three. They go up 17-14. But to the second half, Tessa Helber, she gets the ball, and it hits a jumper. And that extends the shooter's lead to a, uh, to a lot, to a little. Uh, the shooters get the dominating win over threes, please, 48-33. Their chemistry and style led them to the big win. Well, we had some good three-pointers, too. We were getting, you know, setting screens, getting people up for the three, which, which really helps in, in the end. The matching jerseys add to our swag factor by times a million, you know? You, when you look good, you play good. It's the same thing. You dress well, play well, you know? And now let's check in with Reed for the weather. Hey guys, this Thursday, the women's basketball team is heading down to LA to face LMU. So let's take a look down there in LA. And as you can see, it's going to be mid 80s, very sunny and very hot. So ladies, if you're watching, which I know you always do, make sure to pack appropriately and bring some of that suntan lotion. You never know what might happen. And then on Saturday, they're heading down to Malibu to face Pepperdine, where it will continue to heat up as you guys naturally heat up on the court as well. Now let's take a look at the five-day weather cast for Spokane. As you can see, it is heating up a little bit for Spokane as it'll be in about the mid-50s, which means snow is starting to melt on the mountains. So skiers might be that time of the year to put your skis away. I know, very sad. But on the bright side, this Saturday for Valentine's Day, it'll be a little cloudy, but with a chance of snuggle. Isn't that cute? So make sure to get outside that day because love will be in the air. Coming up after the break, you'll hear about some amazing GU students and faculty members who use their gifts to better the lives of others. Stay tuned. You're watching GU TV. Good morning, beautiful. Hey, I like your smile. Great job. Keep up the good work. Hey, your shirt looks really good on you. And this here is the kindest girl on Gonzaga's campus. You're the best. I love GU. Thank you. 
first. God, yeah, I'm gonna start studying right now. Thanks for reminding me. Welcome back to GU This Week. I'm Maggie Fisher. As we heard earlier, a commitment to social justice is a crucial part of Gonzaga's mission as a Jesuit institution. Sometimes the ability to live our lives for others is a matter of making good decisions or being better people. Sometimes it's offered to us in a course catalog. Zach Bagden gives us the scoop on TV and social justice, a broadcasting course where students are allowed to make a difference within the classroom and beyond. Here at GU, Tamara Gregor not only wants her students to get good grades in her class, but she also wants them to make a positive impact on society through the art of storytelling. What I hope is that they go forward and as they're working as editors and producers, that they keep trying to tell those stories, that they give a voice to the voiceless. The students create documentaries to tell the stories of the voiceless. One of Tamara Gregor's favorites came from last semester's class. A documentary called 2% about a girl who was um, pregnant at age 15 and um, a friend of mine ended up with a daughter in the same circumstance and was able to share a link to that story and it came at just the right time for that family. Jessica Clement was one of the people who shot the documentary and she was one of the many people who was touched by the story 2%. Uh, a huge reminder to um, approach human beings as people with worthy stories to tell who are interesting in their own right and who have a lot to give. Tamara and Jessica both believe that there are many stories just like the 2% story that need to be told and through these stories can come positive change. I really hope that they are conscious about the effect of what they put out there, what it has on society. Whether it's a 30 second commercial or a documentary or social media, that the work we do and the kind of storytelling we do, there's such power in it and we need to use that power for good. Zach Bagden, GU TV. Wow, that looks like a great class. Yeah, and I actually have watched that documentary before 2% and it's well done and I think everyone should take a chance to watch it someday. Great. 2%, so check it out. As the semester gets busier, so does the health center. More students start to check in with stress-related sickness. So this week, treat yourself. -y. This annual event hosted by the Fringe and Speak Up brings students together to learn about body, body positivity and radical self-love. As members of the so-called me generation, students are often criticized for self-involvement. This negative connotation can be damaging to the self-esteem of college students. And treat yourself hopes to change that. So grab your friends and head to the theater and dance studio this Friday at 5.30. All are welcome. Tickets for GU's annual charity ball are on sale now. The Casino Royale themed dance hosted by the Knights and Setons will be held in Cataldo this Friday, February 13th. The proceeds from this year's charity ball will benefit Transitions, a local organization that works to end poverty for women and children in Spokane. Tickets are $20 each or $30 for a pair. You don't want to miss this. Happy Activism Week, Gonzaga. February is Black History Month, and GU's Black Student Union has planned a week of events to encourage students to stand in solidarity with victims of racial injustice. Activism Week kicked off with a candlelit vigil and a screen at Fruitvale Station, which unpacks the issues of police brutality and vigilante justice. On Friday, BSU will host a photo shoot to give students the chance to tell their own stories, inspired by a similar event at Harvard University. Students will be given dry erase boards to document and share their experiences with racial prejudice. Stop by Crosby to take part. Your story can make a difference. 
And now we're going to check in with Tiffany Lee over in the Tweet Suite to see what some of your holiday plans are for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Tiff, how's it going over there? Good. Hey, guys. We also asked you guys to send us your Valentine's Day plans, and here are a few of your tweets. Joe Gooding, a fellow GUTV alum, told us that he'll be drinking Starbucks and thinking of my Zag B BFFL on V-Day. Me too, Joe. Me too. And Libby Young said that her brother is coming to visit on Valentine's Day. Now that is the best Valentine ever. And ultimately, we want to thank you guys for all the tweets that you've sent us. And coming up next, we will have sit down with Caleb Dawson on Courageous Conversations. So stay tuned. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. <laughs> But Jessica, how can I compete in guff? Eli, get a team together. Or don't. You can pre-register before February 20th, or you can do it last minute at the starting line. When does it start? It starts February 20th at 8 o'clock, and then you have 48 hours to make a four to six minute video. And it's due February 22nd at 8 o'clock. Elijah? Yes? Please make it to the film premiere on March 20th. I'll wait for you. I will, Jess. I will. Just get out! Get out! No, please! can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And women's rights are human rights once and for all. Welcome back to GU This Week. I'm Maggie Fisher. One of the greatest parts of the Gonzaga experience is the opportunity every student has to make a difference. Joining me today is a student who, in just two years here, has already made big changes. Gonzaga Activities Board Coordinator, Caleb Dawson. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Glad so, to be here. Caleb, you're a part of GSBA, right? Mm -hmm. And the Gonzaga Activities Board, could you explain what that is? Sure. So in high school, a lot of uh, ASBs plan a whole bunch of different events, and the GAB is kind of the body of GSBA that plans the event. So we have a whole bunch of different chairs from entertainment to weekend events, concert, um, lectures, a variety of things, and we're the ones who plan the events of GSBA. Okay, very cool. What are some events that you guys have planned, for sure. instance? Sure. Um, everything from um, the 80s themed skate night to Gonzaga Scares Hunger, 
Um, we've done the um, inner tubing, a whole variety of things, oh, lectures, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Okay, so today we're here to talk about specifically this new thing called Courageous Conversations. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So um, there have been a lot of different current events on uh, on campus and just around the city and in our nation that students want to talk about and sometimes it's hard wanting to talk about those conversations and feeling like you can do that in the classroom if, if a professor can facilitate it but what about those other spaces to have those meaningful dialogues and so um, courageous conversations has been an opportunity for us to create that space for students to have meaningful conversations very cool and it used to be called diversity dialogues is that right correct last month um, we pioneered this event as diversity dialogues wanting to um, incorporate that sort of um, inquisitiveness that students have about diversity and issues of, of social justice, um, but then take it from monologues to someone sharing the story to students interacting and having a dialogue about what, um, what that experience means to them. And so we wanted to open up as a conversation and through that we've come up with the name Converse, um, Courageous Conversations. Very cool. So what are some of the current events that you'd say you talk about during Courageous Conversations? Sure. So last month the focus was on religious diversity. Um, the we wanted to focus on some of the, um, I don't know, some of the tension that arises when you experience someone that's different from you and you don't know how to process that. And most of the time, students only know what they're familiar with. Whereas when there's, th there can be conflict when um, students don't, aren't familiar. And so instead of trying to think about other people from where you're at, it's, it's about learning and understanding that people have different experiences and then um, how can we create a, a campus that is inclusive and creates a space for those things to be meaningful. Definitely. And would you say that a good conversation was facilitated that first time, you know, kind of getting the getting the kinks out of it? Did you think that students benefited from it? I did. Um, I think it was very meaningful, one, as a safe space for students to do that, feeling like they can um, voice their, their opinions and their thoughts and, and get to process. Um, some of my favorite classes are when you get, it's not always the teacher lecturing, and so conversation, courageous conversations are, are designed for students to process through conversation. Um, and so we did, we sent out a survey via SurveyMonkey, of course, and and through that, we every um, all the responses, about half the students who respond, all the all the students who were about half of those who attended, end up saying um, they felt comfortable sharing their opinion and their views. They felt like they had a meaningful conversation, and then they suggested some different topics for the coming um, events. So this is going to be a monthly series. Wow, very cool. What are some of the suggested topics that sure. you guys are thinking about? Um, some students wanted to continue conversation about religious diversity. Others wanted to talk about gender, um, about sexuality, about um, race and ethnicity. Um, it varies, even including what does it mean for students who aren't able-bodied in the same way that some of us are. So from disabilities and mental health, whatnot. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And why would you say that this is important for a Jesuit community specifically? Sure. I think um, because we have this conviction and we, we, hope, we believe in this mission of being men and women for and with others, um, it demands that we are attentive to what does it mean that people are different from us. And if for us to really be a community, we can't assume that everyone is the same. But we have to be in, inquisitive, we have to be interested in, in the aspects of other people's lives that, um, that are theirs and unique to them and, and see how we can incorporate that as a, un, as a meaningful space for everyone. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to students who are considering it but are unsure? You know, why is it important that they attend Courageous Conversations? Sure. Um, I think one of the, my favorite parts about this is it's a safe space for students to practice those conversation skills. And so I think a lot of the times we don't have, um, we have these urges and, and a part of the safe space is that you can have questions. You don't have to come in with all the answers. It's about learning. It's about understanding. Um, and at the very start of the, of, the, um, of the event, we talk about some ground wrestle discussion about dis, um, suspending, um, suspending judgment and um, active listening, different practices that can help you um, to be better in dialogue with people that may be different from you. And I think as we embrace those differences, we can truly be a more, um, a more vibrant community. Definitely. Okay, so what are you most excited about when seeing Courageous Conversations? Like, where do you see it going and mm -hmm. growing on campus? Personally, I'm, I'm very excited because I believe that this could be something as a monthly event and more a frequent event where um, you have an awesome conversation with your professor in class and then you're like, hey, let's, let's go to Courageous Conversations and continue that conversation. Um, I, w I would love to see one day where um, in Bark, or not in Bark, in, in Minicog, um, students are sitting around the, the tables with their professors and having a conversation about things that matter to them and that are important. Because I think there's so much desire for there to be more, like just more in class, and it doesn't always have to be in class. We can have meaningful conversations in our, ho in our residence halls, in our cafeterias. So it's, it's really seeing these meaningful conversations, these spaces become normative and normal to our student body um, engaging in. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Caleb, My and pleasure. telling us about Courageous Conversations. Well, that's our show. Thanks for joining us tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for the sit down show next week when we'll make an exciting announcement. I'm Maggie Fisher from all of us here at GUTV. Good night.